This Focus on Health segment is brought to you by Aurora Healthcare. Hello and welcome to Focus on Health. I'm Ted Stefaniak. Today we're at the Aurora Medical Center in Oshkosh and we're talking about a topic that can be quite painful. It's kidney stones. And we're going to be talking with Dr. Matt Anderson. He's a urologist here to help let us know what we can do to help prevent getting kidney stones and what happens if we get one. Well, thank you for taking some time with us today. Let's start out by talking about what exactly is a kidney stone? Kidney stones are basically minerals or salts that precipitate in the urine to form a stone. In the urinary tract, most commonly, they begin in the kidney itself. Yeah, I would imagine a person knows when they have a kidney stone. Usually, um, the most common thing that people have heard about is the terrible uh, flank or abdominal pain that people can get. Um, that's common, but then also, in some cases, people might have changes in their urinary symptoms such as frequency or urgency of urination and in some cases they may have blood in the urine either microscopically or blood that's actually visible mm -hmm. so those yeah. are some of the symptoms what, what would cause a kidney stone the most common factor in most patients is simple dehydration meaning um, the 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 concentration of the minerals and salts in the urine becomes such that they crystallize and and form there are some other uh, more common medical uh, diseases or conditions that can lead to kidney stones, um, intestinal diseases such as Crohn's disease, uh, hyperparathyroidism, gout, and other things, but those are less common than, than uh, simple dehydration. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about some of the risk factors involved with kidney stones. Yeah, th those, uh, those diseases that I mentioned, uh, in addition to that, pe patients with type 2 diabetes or what we call insulin resistance, they're also at increased risk uh, primarily because they, they have increased calcium that gets secreted into the urine. And so um, those are some of the factors uh, that go into it. Yeah. So. Y you mentioned that uh, a person pretty much knows when they have a kidney stone. Not all the time, but the, but the pain would, would lead one to believe that they have a kidney stone. Is there anything we can do to prevent getting a kidney stone? Yeah, the single biggest factor would be to have a healthy amount of fluid intake. We typically tell our patients that they should drink two to three liters of water a day. Um, that would be roughly 60 to 70 ounces or so. And I, I sometimes uh, tell my patients if they get tired of water, lemonade is probably the next best thing um, because it has a lot of citrate or citric acid in it, which can inhibit stone formation. So, yeah, If a person does have a kidney stone, I mean, are you just hoping for it to pass, or are there different treatment options? There are. There is a spectrum of treatment options. Obviously, our hope for the patient is that uh, you know the stone would be small enough to pass, and we often um, try that first. But then, um, if the stone is not able to pass, we have you know sometimes medications can help, and then in rare cases, you know if need be, we can do uh, more invasive things such as surgical procedures to to remove the stones. Is the laser an option at this point? The laser is definitely an option. We use a particular laser called a homium laser, which is very effective at breaking up stones that are too large to pass. Okay, so you're talking about different types or different sizes of kidney stones. Are there different varieties of kidney stones? There are. Um, Ninety to ninety-five percent of kidney stones are made of calcium, usually combined with what we call calcium oxalate. Um, then the, probably the second most common type would be uric acid, which uh, is sometimes associated with a condition called gout that people are uh, very, very familiar with as well. There are other less common stones that can be related to uh, conditions uh, like cysteine stones, uh, or in some cases patients uh, who take certain medications can form stones as well, but those are very rare. Mm -hmm. Dehydration you mentioned being one, one of the major problems or causes of, of a kidney stone. Can genetics uh, play a role in this at all? It can play a role. It's less common, but in certain types of uh, medical or metabolic diseases, one of them that I mentioned was homocystinuria, mm -hmm. where patients form cysteine stones. Um, uh, there is also other conditions that patients may be born with. Uh, there's one called medullary sponge kidney where the, the tubules inside the kidney are dilated and patients tend to form stones with that disease as well. Yeah, you mentioned pain being a, being a factor in, mm -hmm. in kind of figuring this out. I would imagine the size of a stone, you, you said it, it can vary. Uh, what's the average size of a stone that we're talking about? Yeah, it, it can vary a lot, anywhere from one millimeter all the way up to several centimeters. I would say the average size stone that we see is probably three to four millimeters in size. The nice thing is that typically what we tell our patients, any stone less than about five millimeters uh, will usually pass on its own, although there are variations in that. So we see them all the way from the size of a grain of rice to 
size of a golf ball or bigger. And so, I would imagine the bigger, the more pain is. The, correct, <laughs> and the more uh, you know difficulty in dealing with that. But we do have you know, newer techniques with helping patients deal with that as well. Is it safe to allow a kidney stone to go untreated? In many, in, in a lot of cases it can be, um, it, but it depends on the size and the location of the stone. Typically these smaller stones we do wait anywhere from a week to sometimes two or three weeks to try to allow the patient to pass those spontaneously. Um, some of the bigger stones where we sort of know that there's a statistical likelihood they're not going to pass them, then we move towards more intervention sooner. Right, so, and I would imagine if you're having, if you're experiencing that kind of pain, could there be other issues that, that it might not be a kidney stone? It's a pretty good idea to get them checked out either Absolutely, way. typically the kidney stone pain is quite severe and it will come and go, they call it colic. Um, because of the contractions of the urine tube, but there are other conditions such as, you know, for example, diverticulitis or maybe appendicitis, other things. So typically if a patient has severe pain that doesn't, uh, you know, alleviate, they should see their doctor. All right, and if you are experiencing pain, should we contact you or should we ch check out uh, our primary care physician? Typically it's always a great idea to go through the primary care physician, but if, for example, a patient has a known history of kidney stones, uh, one thing that patients will often tell me is, once you've had a kidney stone, you never forget it, you kind of know what it feels like. <laughs> and so obviously we're always happy to have the patient call us directly as well if they feel that's the best thing. All right, well, it's so. nice to meet you. I hope I never have to see you professionally though. Thank you, I'm, I agree, so. <laughs> Now, if you're experiencing a kidney stone or you have questions or concerns about this topic, you can always get a hold of Dr. Anderson here at the Aurora Medical Center at 303-8700. I'm Ted Stefaniak, and we'll see you next time on Focus on Health. This Focus on Health segment has been brought to you by Aurora Healthcare.